What's up guys? So I want to take just a quick second and do a little hive talk here. Uh, and I want to talk to you guys about, I had a little bit of an incident there in the apiary the other day. Uh, what happens whenever a hive rejects a queen and they don't like her or whatever? Uh, if they reject a queen, uh, there is something that is called queen balling. And it is essentially, they sense that the queen that is in there, whether she was introduced to the hive or whatever the case is, there's something about her that they do not like. And so they ball her and they try to kill her. I had this happen the other day in the apiary. I'll show you the video. So I was in the apiary and I noticed, uh, I was just going through, just doing my normal inspections. And I noticed that there was this like little ball around the front of the hive. And I was like, hmm, I wonder what got into the hive that's, you know, they're trying to get out. And uh, this queen that was in this hive, uh, she had just hatched out about a week ago, or excuse me, she hadn't hatched out a week ago. Uh, she got back from her mating flight and everything else, and it was about, you know, roughly about a month. Uh, you know, I, I typically, whenever they start making a new queen and they're queenless, I leave them for a month and let them do their thing. Uh, that gives her plenty enough time to hatch out of the hive and then come back. So... Pretty much what had happened was the week prior, whenever I was inspecting this hive, I went through and I pulled the queen out and I marked her. Now, whenever I marked her, I left her out and, you know, and let the paint dry and stuff like that. And then I just gently put her back in the hive. So this inspection, I was noticing the balling outside of the hive and I the thought across my mind I really hope that this is not the queen I really hope it's just something that got into the hive and come to find out it was the queen and uh, the hive had pretty much rejected her now whether that was because I marked her or for some other reason they rejected her like that I'm not exactly sure um, but so kind of, you know, going into what to do if you find this. Uh, so, and I'll keep you guys updated on this status, but uh, I went through and I gently pulled some of the bees away. And I mean, they literally attach themselves like Velcro. When they're trying to kill something like that, they hang on and hang on tight. Um, and so I, I pulled them apart, uh, finally got the queen free. Uh, you know, I got her on my tool and stuff like that, uh, stuck her in a queen clip and I gently put her back down to the hive. Uh, you know, went back out there the next day, checked to see what exactly what they were doing. Um, I know I probably should have left them for like another day or two, but if they were still trying to kill her and ball her, then... I mean, I was honestly, I was just going to squish her and let them do another one uh, or give them a queen cell out of one of the hives that I've got that's that's making another queen. So anyways, make a long story short, uh, stuck her in a queen clip and wedged her down in between the frames. So she's protected from the rest of the bees and stuff like that. They can feed her and, you know, hopefully her pheromone production will will pick up throughout the hive and, you know, we should be good. Um, so anyways, uh, went back out there and I pulled her out of the queen clip and let her walk on the frame because I wanted to see exactly what they were going to be doing if I let her out. And whenever I let her out, they started feeding her, uh, you know, and, and cleaning her and taking care of her. So uh, as to what it was about this hive that they just didn't like her. I'm thinking it's probably the marking. So I've got an app that I use, it's called B Plus. 
Uh, if you guys don't have anything for like documentation purposes or anything like that, that is really good at tracking your hives and their status, um, I highly recommend taking a look at this app uh, and taking a look at this company. They're fantastic. Uh, but anyways, I'm just going to be documenting that what year they were born in that. Um, instead of going through and, and marking them. It makes it easier to see your queen whenever they're marked. But honestly, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm to the point right now where I've kind of learned that if I see eggs and there's no queen cells or anything like that in the hive, I'm really not too worried about finding the queen. Um, you know, as, as long as I'm seeing that and seeing signs that there is a queen in there, I'm okay. I've literally got a hive right now that it's been a month since I have seen the queen. And she is literally like the hide and seek champion of, the, of this year. I, I don't know what it is about it, uh, but she she just has not shown, shown her face. So, but I've got eggs in there and they're not trying to swarm. They're not trying to do anything like that. They're not trying to supersede. So I'm just letting it rock on just to see what happens. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll show you guys, you know, the, the video is going to be in here and stuff like that. Uh, you can kind of rewind it, but, um, yeah, it was, it, it was interesting, you know, seeing, seeing the queen being bald like that, that's, that's the first for me. Typically you see that whenever you try introducing a queen to a queenless colony, um, you know, one that you purchased or something like that, you know, and you, you stick them down there in the hive or you do a direct release into the hive and they don't know that queen, they can ball her and try to kill her. Um, so, you know, that's, that's why we have like the direct release side versus the candy side on, on our queen cages. Whenever we get packages of bees or we get, you know, queens that we order, <clears throat> stuff like that. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of beekeepers just do a direct release. Uh, me personally, I do the slow release. I let them eat out that candy um, and come back within like two or three days and see what they're doing with her. Um, and if she's, you know, if she hasn't made it out of there, they're trying to get her out, then I'll just go ahead and direct release her uh, after about three days, uh, three days tops. So yeah, it was kind of interesting, but um, yeah, uh, leave your comments in the, in the comment section. If you guys have ever seen this, uh, happened before in your apiary, um, you know, any insights as to what to do whenever you do find this, be sure to leave, leave some comments in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you guys. So, but yeah, anyways, that's a little bit of hive talk for the day and, uh, we'll catch you guys again in the next one.